Pokemon Pocket is finally here, and what better way to celebrate the launch than to rank every single playable deck in Pokemon Pocket. Hey guys, it's Zen here, and I'm bringing you another official tier list for the global launch of Pokemon Pocket. Now, if this is your first time here, I'm someone who's uploaded over 100 Pokemon Pocket videos just within the past month alone. That might be an exaggeration, but also it might not be. I've competed in a few huge early Pokemon Pocket tournaments, and I've placed as well as top 16. I love battling, and I have a pretty good collection and I'd like to cook up some spicy decks, so I think I know a thing or two when it comes to good Pokemon cards and decks. With that, this is my opinion, so don't get too offended if your Pokemon is a little ranked a low or a little too high, if you will. With that being said, let me take you through the tiers that we're going to be having in today's tier list video. We have this amazing best in the game tier. This is your S tier. This is your God rank right here. Nothing is better than this. Uh, spoiler alert, you probably already know if you've been playing this game, which Pokemon are going in here. Then we have the great decks. These are just overall great decks to play. Uh, they're not the best in the game, but they do have potentials to win tournaments, to top, as well as just being very fun to play in the app right now. Then we have playable decks. These are literally what it sounds like. These are just playable decks. They're not crazy good, but they're also not horrible. They're playable. You can play them and win a ton. You can also possibly lose a ton. Next is an option that I think is pretty appropriate. Now, these cards that are going to go in here aren't necessarily decks, but these are options that potentially you can fit into a variety of decks, right? Depending on what kind of strategy you're trying to build in Pokemon Pocket. I feel like this deserves its own section, whereas the other cards that I'm going to place in other tiers kind of revolve around their own strategy and need specific deck builds in order for those strategies to be pulled off. And then finally, we have the outclassed rank and yeah, these 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 decks and cards, they're just they're outclassed currently with the current set. They just kind of feel unplayable. I don't want to say they're unplayable because you can still play them if you want. But like there are so many, so many better cards than these cards currently, unfortunately. Anyway, with that, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe. And also real quick, after you're done watching this video, you better check the channel. I might be streaming. We're doing a long global launch party stream. But with that, let's get started with our boy Venusaur. Now, Venusaur is straight up a great deck. We're not we're, we're not going crazy here. This is a great deck. I think it's pretty good. It's a uh, potential to heal with 30 and also deal 100 damage is pretty strong. In fact, uh, one of the tournaments where I placed top 16, the winner uh, nothing but bangers, shout out to you, won with a Venusaur deck. So if you thought Venusaur wasn't good, I think again, this thing, especially if you can get your Venusaur online, and that is the biggest hurdle that it kind of runs into is getting online. But if you can get your Venusaur online, you kind of just win. So definitely a really good card. Now, some cards that go with Venusaur, but don't really have their own deck is going to be Butterfree. I think it's a decent tech option. You you can run this in almost any deck. You don't even need your Grass Energies, but as long as you evolve your Caterpie into Metapod into Butterfree, then you're able to proc that ability that essentially acts like a free potion every single turn for each of your Pokemon. These are the kind of cards that I'm going to put here in decent tech options. They don't go into one specific deck. I mean, they kind of can, but they can go into a variety of decks. And I think that's what makes these types of cards really special and this game pretty special, especially since you can only build decks of 20 cards. Next is Blaine. We're going to represent that with nine tails and I'm going to put it in great decks. If you like running aggro fast decks and cards and games, Blaine might be your option right here because for a Rapidash and your nine tails, these are stage one Pokemon along with Blaine. You can deal damage up to 70 with Rapidash for one energy or 120 with nine tails for two fire energy. And that is just so good. In fact, I'm pretty sure, yeah, no, Ninetales Blaine was the top winner in a no EX Pokemon recent tournament. I also partook and got top 16. Uh, <laughs> your boy's cooking. But uh, Ninetales, I think there was like four or five Ninetales in the top eight. So clearly when it doesn't come to EX Pokemon, Ninetales is really good. But also when it does come to EX Pokemon, Ninetales dealing 120 with Blaine is still pretty respectable. Next up, we're going to have Magneton, and this is going to represent Lieutenant Surge. I'm going to put it in playable decks. It's a very playable deck. 
depending on the format, if you're running non-EX Pokemon, it could be very good. Even if you are running EX Pokemon, uh, having Lieutenant Surge and then your cards like Raichu are very strong, being able to deal 140 damage. I don't think it's a great deck, but it's definitely a playable deck. Because uh, again, though, one of the cards that really uh, adds to it with Lieutenant Surge is your Raichu that deals 140, but it loses all of its energy. So I'm not sure if that's something you want to do. Next up is Executor. Typically, this is run with things like your Venusaur, uh, maybe even your Butterfree, maybe things like Victory Bell. But because of that, I'm going to put it at the top of playable. And mind you, this is your starter Pokemon EX, EX Pokemon, if you choose the Charizard pack. So if you're a brand new player and you want a playable card, a playable EX Pokemon, Executor might be a good pick for you. I think it's pretty good because for one energy, you could potentially deal up to 80 damage and it has a pretty decent HP to boot. Next up, we're going to look at Amistar here. Uh, I'm going to put it in decent tech options. Now, this isn't a card specifically that you put in a variety of decks but it is a kind of tech option for if you're going for more of a control style with your water type deck then this could be very good for you typically a water does really good with aggro but if you want to roll a, run a control based uh you know Amistar deck with something like Frostmoth, it could be pretty good, but I'm going to put it behind the Butterfree because Butterfree, I feel like, can go into a variety of things. I feel like I should probably have another. I feel like I should probably have another rank here because that kind of just doesn't make sense, right? But decent tech options and then Amistar. Right, there we go. We have a new rank here. I feel like this is a bit more appropriate. Uh, we'll just leave the decent tech options in the middle, uh, but it essentially goes from playable decks two decent decks, right? But that feels a little bit more uh, appropriate. Now, moving on to Arcanine. I'm sorry, but Arcanine is outclassed. Literally any other EX Pokemon is better than Arcanine. I love Arcanine as a Pokemon. I think this is probably the worst EX Pokemon card. So because of that, I feel like maybe don't choose Pikachu as a starting pack because it feels really bad. It feels really bad to have a Pokemon that potentially deals damage to itself every time it attacks. And if you get knocked out, that's two points to your opponent. And you kind of don't want to do that. All right, next up is going to be Charizard decks. And this is going to be kind of tricky because you run them with Moltres all the time. So these both are going to be considered great decks. However, your Moltres literally is the engine for most fire types. So if you're running things like Center Scorch, you need Moltres. Uh, Ninetales, you kind of don't need it because it's only two energies. But anything with like three or four energies like Flareon, like uh, Center Scorch, you're definitely going to need your Moltres. And because of that, and because Moltres is kind of what carries this Charizard, I think it goes all the way up at the top with Charizard right behind it and Venusaur following right there with with also the Blade Ninetales after the Venusaur. I feel like that makes the most sense currently for the Great Dex ranking. Now let's move on to our first meta best in the game. That's Pikachu. I honestly am not sure if anything is currently better than Pikachu. It just feels so good. And the reason is, is this is a fast paced game. Uh, it kind of doesn't feel great looking for cards to evolve. However, you have a EX Pokemon that as long as you fill your bench with electric basic types, and this is a basic type itself, it can deal up to 90 damage with two energies. That just, that feels insanely good in the game. It can deal up to 180 in two turns. Uh, if you go second, you're guaranteed to do that first 90 damage if you have a full bench. In a game like this currently, the current meta of the game, I don't think anything is gonna be beating Pikachu. Now, if you remember my first tier list, I was ranking EX Pokemon by themselves without their decks, and I ranked Pikachu as not that great and you guys ripped me a new one but clearly we are ranking the overall package of these cards and the decks and Pikachu uh, he's winning tournaments he's he's winning uh, the casual rank the, he's got me like over 200 wins already so yeah Pikachu is definitely the best in the game right now next is Alakazam and uh, Alakazam is absolutely playable I'm not entirely sure yet if it's a great deck I feel like it could be uh, it just it, I haven't found the perfect approach yet for Alakazam like do you go Alakazam stall do you go Alakazam Pidgeot there's so many options and because of that I think it is actually a great deck you can kind of choose a variety of potential options and kind of keep your opponents always guessing not knowing what is the package of alakazam that you're running and because of that i'm gonna put it in great decks but i'm gonna keep it at the end i still think something faster like uh blaine aggro nine tails is a little bit better because it gets online quicker and you deal way more damage but alakazam 
Definitely with the ability to deal insane amounts of damage depending on your opponent's energy attachments is really good. Next up is the Zapdos. And if you're running Zapdos by itself, typically you play Zapdos with uh, your Pikachu. Sometimes you don't have to. But, uh, a lot of times people have been running just 18 trainer cards with a single Zapdos, taking full advantage of the uh, basic EX Pokemon being drawn on your first turn. And because of that, I feel like it's a pretty good card. I'm actually going to put it right over here in playable decks. Some people might put it in great decks because of uh, its potential, but because it does take a while to get online and uh, it is a little bit flippy, uh, I say it's playable. Great decks, I believe, it needs to be held for nothing but consistently great decks. Whereas Zapdos, you might be hitting some here and there. So it, it kind of feels a little difficult to put it in great decks just for right now but it's definitely a playable deck. Speaking of playable decks, I think Blastoise as well is a playable deck. Now I'm gonna put Blastoise at the lead of playable decks. Again, uh, people are gonna chew me out for this. Uh, it's it's a good deck. I don't think it's a great deck because it requires uh, a five water energy. So you need to hit your Misties in order to deal, what is it, 160 damage? However, uh, with just three energy, you could deal 100. So I guess the argument could be made that a lo as long as you have three energies, you're still dealing a lot of damage. And because of that, I'm honestly, I'm okay with moving it right here. So for the starters, it goes Charizard, Venusaur, and Blastoise. And that feels pretty good. However, if you guys feel like these two non-EX Pokemon are better than Blastoise, then the argument could be made for Blastoise to be right here. But I think I'm going to move it here just, you know, to get you guys a little fired up in the comments. Next up is Hypno. This is obviously a really decent tech option. You could put this in any deck that you want. However, I think it's a little bit worse than Butterfree because you do need to flip a coin, flip a heads in order to put them to sleep. You don't flip that coin, then they're not going to sleep. That's pretty much it. Uh, next up is another flipper, and I'm actually going to put this as a decent tech option too. I'm going to put this in front of Hypno, but after Butterfree. Honestly, you could probably put it all the way up here. Yeah, honestly, I'll do that and I'll tell you why. It requires one energy, meaning you can put this Duck Trio in any deck you want. And you can run dual energy. You can run this with Alakazam, right? You can go Alakazam Duck Trio since both of them only require one of their type of energies. So you can run a Psychic and Fighting type deck with Duck Trio, who only requires one energy to go online, and then uh, your Alakazam that requires three and just like get them online on your bench while flipping with your Duck Trio, dealing 40 damage, and then potentially just becoming like indestructible, not taking any damage from your opponent's cards. And the reason I put this as decent tech option is because you can literally put this in any deck. It's pretty good. I'm surprised more people don't do this, but if they don't want to cook these decks, you know, I will. So expect some more hot and spicy Duck Trio decks coming soon. Next up is Golem, aka Brock, and I'm going to put it here. It is outclassed by everything. Honestly, I'm going to put it before the Arcanine EX. Again, I am not hating Arcanine EX. I just, I, it is outclassed by everything. Um, Golem as well, because like for Brock to be really good, I feel like it needs to go into the entire line. Like you should be able to accelerate your Geodude and your Graveler and then Golem and Brock might be pretty good, but that could just be me. Next is Starmie and I'm going to put this uh, after Moltres, but before Charizard EX. Now you guys are probably wondering why would I do that? Why doesn't Starmie go into the best in the game? Well, because it's not the best in the game. And why isn't it before Moltres? And although it has a zero retreat cost and it deals 90 damage for two energies, um, its HP is kind of the issue there. It's 130. And for example, Moltres can definitely beat a Starmie deck. For example, you get your Moltres online, you flip a couple Inferno Dances. It's not weak to Starmie because it's only weak to Electric types. You get your uh, Center Scorch online with four energies. And next thing you know, Center Scorch is coming in, dealing 130, and you just picked up two points from the Starmie. And now, and because of that, I'm going to keep Moltres at the head of great decks currently because you need Moltres to run any sort of fire deck if you want to have any hope in winning with a fire constructed deck. However, Starmie still outclasses literally everything else in great decks. And that's my honest opinion. Hopefully you guys get where I'm coming from with that and you guys don't chew me out any more than you already are in the comments. All right, moving on. We have Articuno here. 
Articuno is a playable deck. I'm going to put Articuno. I'm going to put Articuno before Blaine after Blastoise. Again, you could run this with the Starmie package. You could run this with the 18 trainers. Uh, but especially if you run it with Misty, you can potentially win turn one and just deal 80 damage to their single active Pokemon and just win games like that. In fact, I'm pretty sure I went into a match with somebody, check their profile afterwards. They were running Articuno 18 trainers and they had 600 plus wins in the first week of Pokemon Pocket Soft Launch, which is insane, you guys. Also, if you're that person, uh, go touch grass. What are you doing, man? All right, next up is Kabuto. I'm going to put it in decent decks. It's a fossil type. I think Amistar might be better. Uh, you can argue that Kabutops is really good, too. It could be a decent tech option. The reason I don't put it at a decent tech option is because it requires two other cards to even get to this point. So because of that, we're just going to put decent decks. I feel like you actually have to build this Kabuto tops deck because you need the uh, what is it dome fossil and the uh kabuto in order to get to this point however you know the trio here you just need diglett you're good to go and for me that makes sense now the next card that i think is a decent tech option that can go in any deck and is at the top of decent tech option is greninja greninja is insane from your bench you could just start sniping 20 damage to any pokemon on your opponent's side that is in unbelievably amazing. I'm not gonna say it's broken, but you can build super effective decks with this strategy. The only issue is that it does require three Pokemon, your Froakie, your Frogadier, and your Greninja. So that's three Pokemon in order to evolve to even get to this ability, which kind of sucks. However, I still think it's probably the best tech option that we've currently gone over. So because of that, it's at the it's at the top of uh, decent tech options. Moving on is Melmetal. And honestly, I probably, if you asked me this a week ago, would put Melmetal in Outclass, but I took a Melmetal into a non-EX tournament and it's, I'm gonna put it here, it's playable. Uh, I don't wanna be too biased, I did really well. I like this with things like wheezing or something, but I can't I can't feel comfortable putting it at the top or something like in great or even best because it's not. So because of that, I'm gonna put it at the end of playable decks. Now this is something that I feel super conflicted about, uh, wheezing. Wheezing can be a great deck on its own if you're running Koga, and if that's the case, it's up here, right? However, you can also run this in literally any single deck that you're trying to stall. These are, the Weezing is great in decks where your other Pokemon need at least like four energy to get online. For example, you can even run a Weezing and Charizard deck list, which is insane, right? If you don't have a Moltres, but you have a Weezing and a Charizard, you can run that with your Koga. You get your uh, you get your Weezing to the front line, you, you get your Charizard in the back, and they're trying to get online. You can run it with your Blastoise, your Snorlax, your Melmetal like I did. Anything that requires so many energies to get online makes Weezing the best tech option in the entire game, uh, and I, I mean that wholeheartedly. I really do think Weezing is the best tech card of the entire genetic Apex set. Moving on, Arbok, playable deck. I'm gonna put it all the way up here. I think Arbok is probably one of the best playable decks because it, it's the only Pokemon in the game. It's the only card in the game that has the ability to trap your opponent. They can't, they can't retreat, and that is a super strong uh, ability. And most of the time it can just like two tap, maybe three turns to knock out a Pokemon with its 60 damage. Next up is Gengar and uh, Gengar is tough. I just, I'm gonna put Gengar after Arbok. And for a very obvious reason, its ability, insane, right? Your opponent just can't play supporter cards. However, it requires you to evolve first, right? and its attack requires three psychic type energies. It's a retreat cost also, its HP is pretty decent, but because of all those other factors, I feel like there are plenty of other decks that are just a bit better, in my opinion. Heck, honestly, I might even put it behind Exec Executor. Now, if you've seen my first EX Pokemon uh, video, I put Gengar so high, I love playing it, but like uh, consistency wise, it's, it's just very hard to get this thing online. Uh, and by that point, your opponents kind of used all of their supporter cards. The only time this goes online, it, you're only fighting Giovanni. Uh, you, you might be fighting Blaine's and you might be fighting uh, Sabrina's, but you're not fighting Professor Researchers. You're not stopping those. You're not stopping Misty's anymore. So it just it doesn't feel 
insanely good. Next is Nidoking, King, and this is gonna cover the Nidoking King and Nidoking Queen package. I'm gonna put it at the top of decent decks. It's really fun. I don't think it's the best, but it's it's definitely a good option. Marowak EX. Now this is the EX Pokemon you get for your Mewtwo. It is a flippy deck. However, I, I'm gonna put it up here. I'm gonna put it, I'm, this might be a little bit biased, but I feel like this Marowak is insanely underrated. A stage one Pokemon for two energy. If you get lucky, you're crushing things like that Pikachu that's currently best in the game. And because of that, it's not a great deck, but I definitely think it's at the top of playable decks. All right, now we're going into Pidgeot. I think this is a easy second in decent tech options. It's essentially Sabrina, but in the form of Pokemon, and it doesn't cost you your spot for using uh, supporter cards on your turn. So I definitely think that's a very good option. Dragonite is uh, a playable deck for sure. Uh, actually, I think it's a great deck. I think it's a great deck and I think it is before Blaine and uh, before Alakazam but after all these other EX Pokemon. Now the reason I'm putting it so high is because with the format of EX Pokemon uh, it could potentially just knock out an EX Pokemon and get you two points for free while also knocking out one of their weaker Pokemon on the bench and then you you just win right turn one most times you win turn two. The issue with this card the reason it's so low and past all these EX Pokemon is it requires two types of energies and it kind of takes forever to get online. And with the current energy system, you have no guarantee that you're actually gonna get these energies that you need. So it's a little bit lucky. However, I've seen in my own like uh, experience, Dragonite has been insanely good. It's a very strong card, especially in the format where it can just easily deal 200 damage uh, across the entire board and just wipe out an EX Pokemon, regular Pokemon, and get you points like it's nobody's business. Machamp. Uh, another Pokemon that if you asked me uh, a month ago with Soft Launch, I'd say it's outclassed. However, Machamp, it, it's it's tricky, right? If you have all the cards in your hand and you're going first, it's uh, it's at top of decent deck. However, again, if you have all the uh, cards in your hand or if you're like the, the evolution line and you're going second, it is a very good card. I would put it before Gengar after Executor because you're going second, it is just it's on curve. You give your Machop an energy, you're dealing 20. Machoke, you evolve the next turn, you give another energy, that's 50 damage. The third turn you evolve, and now you're dealing 120 damage. It is so good if you have the cards in your hand and you're going second, so you can play on curve. It feels pretty bad if you're going first. However, you could build it on your bench, but definitely a Pokemon that really likes going second. Uh, a deck archetype that likes going second. Uh, next is uh, Aerodactyl, and I I hate this thing. I When I play Aerodactyl, it never works for me. However, if my opponent plays Aerodactyl and I only have one Pokemon out, they always get heads. Explain that to me. Explain that to me, Pokemon Pocket, because of that outclassed. If you play this, I don't like you. I'm just kidding. Moving on to our second best in the game, it's Mewtwo. Absolutely Mewtwo. Mewtwo's uh, winning a ton of tournaments. I, but I still think Pikachu is insanely good, and I'll explain it to you guys. Pikachu, in order to get big and deal insane damage, needs you to play basic Pokemon. You have Pokeballs, Professor Researchers, things that get you basic Pokemon. Pull up your bench, you're dealing 90. Mewtwo needs you to find a Ralts, evolve it to a Curlia, and then evolve it to a Gardevoir to be threatening and just like oppressive. You can't stop it. That's a lot of steps. And because of that, uh, Mewtwo is a second a place to the Pikachu, which brings us to the final deck, and that's going to be Control Wigglytuff. And um, it's a decent deck. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I think it's uh, extremely playable. I'm going to put it in front of Gengar, but after Machamp. I, I definitely think Wigglytuff is better than Gengar. <laughs> oh man, I can just see the comments now. But there you guys have it. This is my official global launch tier list for every single playable deck in Pokemon Pocket. Let me know in the comments what you think. And if you're looking for these deck lists on how to play these decks, well then check out my channel. I think I already mentioned I have like a ton of videos, so I'm sure you'll find the decks. Let's just start scrolling, start scrolling. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.